Good morning, folks. We've got a lot to cover here at Earth and way out into deep space, and not much in between. We may have no sunspots, but we've got space weather. As we come to spaceweathernews.com and find the last day on our star was dominated by the coronal holes once again. Bright areas at the limb are disappointing so far, but even without sunspots, the coronal holes have provided intensified solar wind starting this morning, right side of the chart. The event is just beginning and will need to be monitored throughout the day given that geomagnetic instability is present already. The peak and duration of the stream will determine the evolution of this geospace disruption. Moving on to quakes, largest of the day struck way down at the transition zone between the upper and lower mantle. Second biggest of the day flanked Australia on the opposite side, down south of New Zealand. Top weather concerns are only a few hundred miles away from each other and are part of the same storm system. Middle of the U.S. pounded with snow, many records falling. And on the convergence line, we've got tornado warnings flying overnight and into this morning. Leading edge assault and trailing blizzard continue for another day. And now we're jumping out into space. Scientists wanted to study a star which was having interesting brightness fluctuations, but there was a problem. The star was already very bright and most of the telescopes ended up just zooming in on glaring white. So they turned to ALMA, who pierced the veil, and they're saying this feature must mean there was a binary system there where one star engulfed the other. But that's a heck of a lot of symmetry for something resulting of random, chaotic interactions. Then again, whether it's radio or x-rays or infrared, the information about the cosmos isn't always easy to interpret from here on Earth, and that's the claim of the latest on WISE. The infrared excess of the heavens is shown to be highly contaminated, meaning it has been messing with the previous measurements and uses of those measurements like dust formation, distance to objects, etc. The dust is a cosmic trickster, and so are the cosmic fields. Today, they don't resemble what they did long ago as the universe was being sculpted, but those primordial fields left traces of themselves around for us to find. Studies are coming out every week these days, attempting to find and further characterize these cosmic fields. They would be tremendously weak compared to even the magnetic forces that a child's toy allows them to play with, but stretched across the cosmos, they're accounting for amazing unseen forcing on the heavens. Some of the plasma setups of that sculpting are just barely visible to us today. This is the Ophiuchus supercluster and it turns out it's much more than light points of distant galaxies and dark gaseous clouds. Just as we saw a few days ago, they're using different radio frequencies to pick up relic structures that they didn't know were there, hiding in plain sight. In this case, the structures are lobed and gorgeously surrounding the cluster populations. Once again, we look and we look and we get an upgrade in thinking and technology and all of a sudden the world of dusty plasma is revealed in the same places and shapes as they expected to find dark matter. Folks, we are starting the next Observer's Research Group today. The only prerequisite, if you'll recall, is to be able to find an email to tell us your interest. And this week, we're doing the food aspect of surviving humanity. But that is not prepping stocks or growing your own food or permaculture, farming, agra, anything. This is surviving the grocer. GMO, organic, chemicals, gliadin, glycemic indices, types of fat, types of sugar, processed versus whole food, seasonal eating, paleo, primal, keto, vegan. This is a big topic and I will need some help from those who want to be organizers and managers of the group. Remember, we can only be in one of the observer's research groups at a time, so select wisely. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind map forecasts and shots of our star to close, and of course, we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now it's 4.45 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.